little fox. The Golden Egg Farmer John and his wife Mabel don't have a lot of money. The summer is very hot and dry. Most of their corn is dying. But Mabel wants a new car. We don't have enough money, Farmer John says. You could sell your old tractor, Mabel says. I need that old tractor to plow the field, Mabel, Farmer John says. Maybe we can get a new car next year. But I need a new car now, Mabel says. Sorry, Farmer John says. They are both quiet. It's getting late. We need eggs for breakfast tomorrow, Mabel says. Go get some for me, John. Farmer John goes outside. There are only three eggs in the chicken coop. But one is different. Oh my goodness! Farmer John yells. Mabel, come here! Mabel enters the chicken coop. What is it, John? She asks. Why are you yelling? I think this egg is made of gold, Farmer John says. He shows it to her. <gasps> oh my! Mabel says. It's so shiny. She taps the egg hard on the chicken coop wall. It doesn't break. I think you're right, John. This is a golden egg. Now we can buy a very nice car. We have to be careful, Mabel. Farmer John says. Let's go in the house. Mabel and Farmer John sit down. The golden egg is on the table. Let's wait until tomorrow before we do anything, Farmer John says. I want to see if that chicken lays another golden egg. They go to bed. In the morning, there is another golden egg in the chicken coop. Oh, John! Mabel screams. We could move to a much nicer house with this chicken. She picks up the chicken and kisses it. Mwah! We could be millionaires, John. Just think, Farmer John says. We will be rich by the end of the week. John, Mabel whispers. I know how we can get all the eggs right now. We don't have to wait. How? Farmer John asks. We can kill the chicken, Mabel says. Then we can take all the golden eggs at once. So Farmer John kills the chicken, but there are no golden eggs inside it. Oh no! Mabel screams. Where are all the golden eggs? I guess we should have waited, Farmer John says. Now we won't get any more golden eggs. Mabel starts to cry. <laughs> oh, we'll never be millionaires, she says. Why do bad things always happen to us? Bad things happen when people are greedy, Farmer John says. Molly and the Milk. One fine day, a young farm girl walked to the market. Her name was Molly. On her head, she carried a pail of milk. I am so excited! The market has so much to see. After I sell my milk, what should I buy? She wondered. Hmm, let me think. But Molly had only one pail of milk. She could not sell it for a lot of money. I will buy.
by one hen, she decided. What would I do with just one hen? One hen would lay many eggs. Then the eggs would hatch. What would I do with all the chicks? I would feed the chicks. They would grow large and healthy. Then they would lay more eggs. The eggs would hatch and I would have more chicks. Oh yes! Then I would sell many eggs and chicks. People would come from all around to buy them. I would be rich! Molly smiled. I would buy beautiful clothes, golden pins for my hair, and shiny shoes. I would be the richest and most famous person in the village. One day, I would be invited to the palace. Everyone would envy me. I would meet a handsome prince. The prince would bow to me. And I would bow to him. I would say, Your Majesty, and bow like this. When Molly bowed, the pail <gasps> fell from her head. The milk spilled everywhere. Molly cried and cried. <laughs> the milk was gone. And Molly's dreams were gone too. The Lion's Bad Breath The lion was very strong. He was the king of all the other animals. One day, the lion met a monkey. Good morning, your majesty. Your mane looks wonderful today, said the monkey. Of course, agreed the lion. Suddenly, the monkey held his nose. Oh my! Is something wrong, little monkey? asked the lion. Uh, no, no, nothing, sir. Then why did you make such a face? Tell me the truth! The lion commanded. Well, uh... The monkey trembled. Your breath smells bad, that's all. My breath smells bad? Is that all? Repeated the lion. Oh, yes, yes, that's it, uh, that's all said the monkey. Okay, then you will never smell it again! And the lion ate the monkey up. The lion was still angry, so he stopped a rabbit passing by. You there, stop! Come here and smell my breath! He ordered. Me? Oh yes, my king! The rabbit was scared. When the lion breathed, she groaned. Oh, oh! Does it smell good or bad? The lion asked. The rabbit knew that the lion ate the monkey. So she lied to the lion. Oh, my king! Your breath smells wonderful! Is that so? How wonderful does it smell? He asked. Mmm, uh, your breath smells fruity like an apple, said the rabbit. You are lying to me, growled the lion. So he Ow. ate the rabbit up too. The fox saw all of this from behind a tree. He was so terrified that he tried to run away. You, little fox, called the lion. Stop there. 
Ah, oh, yes, my king, answered the fox. Come here and smell my breath, said the lion. The poor little fox had no choice but to smell the lion's breath. The lion breathed. How was it? Was it good or bad? Oh, what should I tell him? Thought the fox. The lion's breath smelled really bad. The fox could not lie to him, but he could not tell the lion what it was really like either. Why don't you say something? The lion asked. Do you think my breath smells bad? Oh no, my king! I, I, uh, said the fox, thinking quickly. I have a cold. Yes, I have a cold. So my nose is very stuffy. I cannot smell anything very well. He said. I can only guess that your breath smells good.、Uh, what do you think? He asked. Ah, hmm. Yes. I am sure it smells good," said the lion. "Sure," agreed the fox, and the satisfied lion let the fox live. The donkey and his masters. Once upon a time, there lived a donkey. His master sold herbs in the market. The donkey worked very hard each day. But his master wanted the donkey to work harder. Yet the master only gave him a little bit of food. The donkey was not happy. The donkey decided he'd had enough. He did not want to work for his master any longer. Only one person could help. The donkey searched for Jupiter. The god of the sky and rain. Please give me a new master," begged the donkey. The donkey explained why he wanted a new master. "I will give you a new master," Jupiter said firmly. "But you will regret making this wish." The donkey was too happy to care. The donkey's new master was a brickmaker. The donkey had to pull heavy carts of bricks every day. The donkey's master wanted him to work harder. He did not give the donkey any food or water. The donkey was not happy with his new master either. He went to see Jupiter again. Please give me a new master," begged the donkey. I will give you a new master," Jupiter said firmly. "But this is the last time I will grant your wish. This will be your last and only master." Again, the donkey was too happy to care. The donkey's new master was a tanner. He caught and killed animals. Then he skinned them and sold their hides. This master was the worst of all three. The donkey remembered Jupiter's words. You will regret wishing for a new master. Oh, it would have been better if I had stayed with the other masters. The donkey cried. I may have been hungry, or I may have been tired from too much work, but this master will skin me like his other animals. He will make use of me even after I die. The donkey learned an important lesson: if you are not happy in one place, you will not find happiness in another. The fox and the crow. The fox is a very clever animal. He can get whatever he needs. He can eat whatever he wants. Being clever all the time was not easy for the fox. It was a lot of hard work, so he really needed his rest.
The fox took a nap every afternoon. One afternoon, the fox was awakened from his nap. It was a crow. She was carrying a big piece of cheese in her beak. The fox stared at the cheese. Look at that cheese, he said to himself. I'm sure it tastes delicious. I must have some of that cheese. The fox thought and thought. Finally, he had an idea. The fox pretended to be asleep. The fox stretched his body. He yawned loudly. The fox looked up at the crow. Then he put his hand upon his heart. Oh, hello. Am I still dreaming? The fox asked aloud. You are the most beautiful crow I have ever seen. The crow was embarrassed. She did not know what to say. The fox continued. Look at your feathers. They shine like the sun. The crow spread her wings a little more. Your eyes are bright like the moon. The fox admired. The crow opened her eyes wide. Such a beautiful bird must have a beautiful voice. The fox slyly looked at the crow. How I would love to hear a song from you. Then I will call you Queen of the Birds. The crow held up her head high. She opened her mouth and out came a loud caw. Caw! 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 She cried. At the same time, out dropped the piece of cheese. The fox quickly jumped up and caught the cheese in his mouth. The crow stopped singing. Oh! My cheese! She cried out. But it was too late. The fox got what he wanted. Your voice is good, the fox finally said. But let me give you some advice. Don't trust those who flatter you. The Heart and the Hunter once upon a time, there lived a beautiful heart. The heart was tall, proud, and graceful. But his most outstanding feature was his antlers. Every day, the heart came to drink from the river. And every day, the heart would admire his reflection in the water. Just look! The heart exclaimed. Look at these magnificent antlers. No one has such beautiful antlers as I, he boasted. The heart stood and admired his antlers for a long time. No one was allowed to touch his precious antlers. Not even little birds taking a little break. Shoo, shoo. He would swing his legs at you. He would How dare you sit on my beautiful antlers? He scolded. The heart looked to make sure his antlers were okay. Oh! He suddenly cried. The heart lifted his leg higher. What a shame! He moaned. These legs are not worthy to hold my great antlers. The heart frowned. I wish my legs were more beautiful. The heart was so distressed that he did not know he was being watched. Look at those magnificent antlers. The hunter was thinking to himself. The hunter slowly took out his arrow. He aimed carefully at the heart. The arrow flew but missed the heart. At that moment, 
the heart turned and saw the hunter. Oh, oh! He cried as he quickly ran away. The heart nimbly jumped over fallen trees. His legs gracefully carried him through the forest. The hunter could not keep up with the heart. The heart ran as swift as the wind. No one, not even the birds, were as fast as the heart. After some time, he turned around to look for the hunter. The hunter was nowhere to be seen. The heart laughed with relief and joy, but not for long. Smash! The heart was not watching where he was going. His great antlers got stuck in some branches. The heart tried to free himself, but no matter which way he turned, his antlers would not budge. Oh, why are you so big and grand? He shouted at his antlers. Meanwhile, the hunter was able to catch up with the heart. The heart looked down at his legs. Even though you are not as beautiful as my antlers, he said, you carried me fast and far. Oh, how we despise what is most useful to us. The heart cried with regret. The smallest favor. Arthur the ant was very kind. He always helped the other ants with their work. The ants were building a new nest for their queen. Arthur was working very hard. His work made him thirsty, so he went to the river for a drink. He took a jug to get water for his friends too. When Arthur arrived at the river, he saw a problem. The water at the edge was too shallow to fill the jug. So Arthur carefully stepped into the water. What are you doing, little ant? Asked a dove in the tree. I'm trying to fill my jug with water. Arthur replied. Well, be careful. The dove said. Arthur walked slowly into the water. He walked deeper and deeper and deeper. Finally, the water was deep enough to fill the jug. The jug was almost full. Arthur reached down to lift the jug, but it slipped. The water carried the jug away. Arthur reached for the jug, but then he slipped. Now Arthur and the jug were floating away. Help me! Arthur cried, but none of the ants could hear him. The dove looked down and saw Arthur in the river. So the dove pulled off a leaf and threw it down. Little ant, climb onto this leaf, she called. Arthur climbed on the leaf and lifted his jug with him. He paddled to the bank, got off, and waved to the dove. Thank you, Miss Dove, he called. You're welcome, little ant, she said. Arthur told his friends about the water and the dove. They were glad he was safe. And they said he was very brave to have escaped the river. Thus, Arthur became the colony water ant. One day, Arthur was filling the jug when he saw a man. The man was very big and he looked scary. He had a bag with feathers on it and a big gun. He was standing by the dove's tree, staring at the sky. Oh no! Arthur said quietly. He is a bird hunter. I must help Miss Dove. The man went behind a bush to hide. Just then, the dove flew over the tree. 
Arthur knew he had to hurry. So he quickly climbed up the man's foot and bit him hard. The man began to jump in pain, shouting, Ow! 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 His noise and jumping scared the dove. Fly away, Miss Dove! He's a hunter! Arthur yelled. The dove understood and flew away. Thank you, little lad, she called. You're welcome, Arthur said. You helped me, now I help you. Arthur picked up his jug and walked home. <laughs>